This is a 2016 Corvette Z06. And that's Sam Schmidt driving down the Las Vegas Strip. Now, what's incredible is Sam is quadriplegic. He was paralyzed after a racing car accident 15 years ago. But now, he is the first American to be given a special license to drive a semi-autonomous car on public roads. And really, there's no better place to drive than this. Good old American horse car. The car has been specially modified by Arrow Electronics. Using repurposed off-the-shelf technology, the team has used a mixture of input techniques to allow Sam to control the car. This includes voice commands to activate the gears and indicators, and a very novel approach to the steering mechanism. For steering, we have four IR cameras set up that are um, on the dash looking at you, and there's reflective markers on either your sunglasses or a ball cap or even a helmet. And so those cameras see your movement, and then you're turning left and right, and the steering wheel goes accordingly, left or right, all the way, lock to lock. So what we're doing is we're basically calibrating the cameras. And when they are in calibration, they can measure the position of its head within a fraction of a millimeter. For the gas and brake, there's a tube in your mouth, and it's a, it has a pressure sensor inside. So when you blow into it, um, that gives you acceleration, and when you suck into it, it gives you brake. The biggest thing is you have to untrain uh, your mind because it's used to uh, you know, wandering, looking at rearview mirrors, and looking behind you, and looking at blind spots. Can't do that in this car because if you do, the car turns. <laughs> but while turning Sam's head into a joystick is pretty impressive, the technology alone is not enough to get him back on the road. He does need to have a co driver with him at all times. Now, when you see him driving, it's easy to forget just how difficult his journey here has been. 17 years ago, I thought there was no way I would ever you know, drive again. It wasn't um, really on the radar. I always wanted to race at the Indy 500, so that was my dream, my desire. Uh, fortunately, made it there. Uh, won the race in Vegas in 1999 with this car, and uh, that was kind of the peak of everything. And then uh, three months later, testing for the 2000 season. I uh, hit the wall at uh, Orlando, Florida, and that's that story. His racing past made it really important for Sam to try and adapt a car so he could actually feel like he was driving, rather than a fully autonomous car where he takes a passive role. A fully autonomous car is just a bigger, faster wheelchair for someone like Sam. But that's not the same as driving. It doesn't represent the freedom of driving, the choices he can make, as well as the sense, and more than the sense, the real act of control and being the driver of his life. It's incredibly difficult to describe the feeling when 99% of what you do every day you need somebody to help you with. And, you know, the first time I drove out of the car, everybody around me was drawn for tears and so was I because really in 14 years at the time, I had not felt that level of independence and that level of normalcy because I'm in control. I'm making the decisions, I'm pushing on the gas, I'm pushing on the brake, I'm steering the car, and there are very few things that have happened since the accident that I could say I'm in control. Mm -hmm.